Hello and welcome to ACPANEL Tutorials. Today I want to talk about masks in general, luminosity masks and how ACPANEL can help you build luminosity masks faster. To get a full overview of ACPANEL features, I suggest you to watch ACPANEL Overview on the YouTube. There are lots of great masking uh, tutorials and explanations about how masks work in Adobe Photoshop on YouTube, so I will keep it short. Let's start with a very simple example. So masks is something that you can attach to a layer that can control what is visible and what is not visible on this layer. So if I have a brush, you can see that the brush is selected and I have a very thick brush on this size. I have white layer and I have this yellow layer on the background. So on the white layer, there is a mask attached. And if I would draw on this mask with black, it would define what is which part of this layer is really visible. So if I make a hole in the middle, we will see a black. So this is like a see-through, like a hole in this layer. So this layer would be visible. This is a very simple mask and this is very thick. So let's try something a little difficult, a little more difficult. If I would build, if I would build a gradient mask that will be ranging from black to white and let's say I put it like here and this would be the mask so on the mask whatever is black is like a hole in the layer whatever is white is kept invisible on the layer so you see that whatever was black now see uh, see through now is not visible on this layer anymore and you can see through this white layer and see the yellow layer in the background but this is a very simple gradient mask. Now let's see how luminosity mask looks like and why is it called luminosity. If you have an image like this, then luminosity mask would be a mask that is built based on the luminosity values of every pixel on the image. So if I will do a luminosity, then this is what it would look like. So basically it's the brightness level of every pixel of the image. And what it gives you, it gives you an opportunity to control these bright pixels all over the image and decide which are visible and which are not. So if I will say, select light to mask, which will limit the light part of the image comparing to the basic luminosity mask. It will limit it to the more bright uh, pixels of the image and keep in mind that whatever is black is like see-through and whatever is white is really selected. So this is basically a way to build a very nice selection of the image. So if I then apply this to the curves layer and then I would drag this curve and you see that histogram shows that light parts of the image are very selected. So if I will keep pushing the curves layer, you will see that only the selected pixels were affected. This is because we have a mask applied to the curves layer. And, and if I will try to change this mask by, for example, applying a regular uh, correction to the image, like levels, for example. So what we could do just to try and make it much brighter and much more limited. So whatever is white will be really selected. So if I press OK now, and switch off the mask and I press Option or Alt and I click on the layer, then you can see that our curves effect is now much more drastic. This is the luminosity mask. Now let's see how can we use luminosity mask to control this image better. So with Arc Panel, you're able to compare different masks by just hovering over buttons. So if I have lights, um, one for example, and I click to select it and I want to compare how it looks to light 3. Okay, so we see that light 3 is very limited. And let's, let's for example decide what we want to do with the masking. So let's say that we want to make these flowers brighter. And we have lots of seemingly very dark parts of the image that we might want to bring up. So let's do this. To select these bright parts of the image, I think lights one gonna work nicely. But it's a little too, it's covering too much, I'd say. So 
I can select the lights one, then I can refine it with levels, curves or inversion. So let's see what we can do with the curves. We want to limit the effect to the petals of the flowers. So we want to make a selection that will make them white and whatever we are not really interested in, we want to keep it in the dark. So once we have this selection, then we can apply the mask either to the levels, to the curves, as a selection, to the current layer or to any other adjustment layer we want. And let's just start with the curves for the beginning. Now we have a curves layer and this curves layer has a mask that we have just built with our panel. Now let's make the flower, flowers a little bit brighter and we can really control with the curve that, for example, we want to make this, the darkest part of the flowers the right part of the histogram. We want to make it a little darker so that the color would be a little more even. And the dark parts and the middle range, we want to make it a little brighter. So let's see if we like the effect. Okay, maybe this is not the best for the art quality of the image, but for the tutorial purposes, this works. So let's try to fix those dark series of the image now. To do this, we want to build the darks uh, luminosity mask. And by hovering over darks buttons, you can really see what's going to be selected. And this looks really inverse because whatever's going to be selected right now is the dark part of the image. So the darkest parts are going to be white. So we need to come up with the uh, luminosity selection that will work for us to restore these dark parts of the image. And I would say that darks 3 should work very well here. It doesn't affect flowers very much. So let me click and let's build it. So it doesn't affect flowers very much and most of the leaves, but those deep dark parts of the image that were really black before, we can really work with them. And we don't really need to refine anything here. I think Dark 3 works just nicely. So let's build the curves layer. You see in the curves layer, the histogram now shows that only the darkest parts of the image are really selected. And what we could do here, for example, we could set a control point to keep some kind of black as a reference and the rest we just brighten up. So you see the effect before and after. It's bringing back those details in the darkness. And we might go even further with this for example, by selecting Darks 5, which would limit our selection to the darkest parts of the image. And then if we set the curves and try to push it a little bit further, you see how the details bring back. So by bringing back those details, maybe you will be able to restore some part of the image that was not very visible before. So let's get rid of these three example layers. And let's see how middle range mask going to affect our image. So if light selects light part of the image and dark darks part of the image, we also have mid range. The mid range is whatever is in the middle. And the way I prefer to use mid-range is to build a mask and then try to refine it with levels because quite often mid-range selects too much for the luminosity mask, too much information. So I might limit it and maybe I can build that, that um, mask for the petals, for the flowers using just the mid-range by just refining it properly. But keep in mind that with mid-range Quite often, with the mask, you will see that some parts, some contrasty parts of the image are not very selected, very well selected. So, for example, if I will now start working with the curves on this flower, you might see that very dark and like dark and, and bright parts of the image are not very affected by this mask. So this can result in a little bit strange effect of the processing. So just be careful with the mid-range mask because it can result in some discoloration. But overall, uh, quite often you might use it. And we will see this in the advanced 
image use. Another important thing in the arc panel that you can find is zones. And uh, if darks is the dark part of the image, lights is the light and mid is the middle, then zones, they just uh, are like slices. So you see this gradient. So the light is going to be selecting the light part and the dark is the right. And the zones, they will be slicing. So the zero zone roughly corresponds to this part of the gradient. The one is this range and so on. So you can see that sometimes you could use the zone to have a very complex selection. And uh, for example, zone five is equal to the M1, which would be the middle mask. Now let's see how we can use the mask in our panel a little bit more advancedly. Having this image, what we might want to do with this using luminosity masks. So when I just look at this image, it's a little flat and we might want to bring contrast to this image. I also like this part of the image when there is a little bit of light seeping through those trees, but it's not as bright as the other part of the image and it's not that prominent. So maybe we want to bring some of the details on these small hills. Also, if I zoom in very closely, you can see that some patches of the grass, they are not really overexposed, but they are too bright. So we might want to limit this effect and darken those bright patches a little bit. So let's see how we can do this with luminosity masks. If I go to Arc Panel, if I want to darken these bright patches, I might just want to go to the very light mask. So you see, here is the light three. It's affecting some of the hills also, some of the darker patches of the grass. And lights 4 is already very limited. Lights 5 is just those bright spots. So let's try with the lights 4 so the effect would be a little more soft. So if I go to curves now, see the effect? So those bright spots, they uh, got darker, but also the areas around them they got a little flat. That is because we have a very drastic curve. So let's just restore this a little bit. And try to limit the effect so it would be nicely so that on the print, when you print this image large, you wouldn't see those bright spotches on the grass. Okay. Another way we could uh, try to use luminosity mask is to restore details on this part of the hill. And for this we might build a, a middle range mask because this is not really bright, it's not really dark, so it's more like in the middle range of the luminosity of the image. And we can build a custom mask that will really bring back the effect on those hills. So let's try. If I go to the middle, Okay, this is too flat, this is a little too bright, so let's try the brightest version. And then we're going to go to levels and refine this. So what we really want to have is a selection that is bright enough to, to bring back these bright parts of the image and also the overall brightness of the hue, so we can try with something like this maybe. Okay, okay, let's see how, gonna, how this is gonna work. So let's make a curve adjustment. And then let's bring this up. Let's bring some contrast. And we're not really looking on the other parts of the image because that's not what we are really interested in. We also can try changing from the luminosity blending, which would be affecting only the luminosity to normal so it would also bring back the color sometimes you really want this so let's see if i have this selection and now i just i'm just interested in this heel so the rest is this looks really ugly so let's just have a group on the top let's put a mask on this group and let's invert the mask i'm pressing command i and let's put this layer that we had inside the group. Okay, so now we don't really see the effect. And we can start painting this effect in. 
So I'm selecting the brush, I'm making it small and very very soft. And then I also go to the very low level of opacity. I'm pressing numbers from 1 to 0 on the keyboard, so if I press 2 it selects opacity of 20%. Um, let's break, let's make this a little larger and very soft and let's try to paint this effect in with the white paint, with the white color on top of our mask. So keep in mind that white will reveal parts of the layer that is on the top. So, okay. And we should be very careful because we remember this not uh, this effect that we have now on this curves layer it doesn't look very nice on this part of the image it's just about bringing back this hill with the details so let's try to be careful with our uh, mask okay so let's see the effect this is before and this is after And the last thing that we might want to try in this image is just overall contrast of the image. So to do this, I think the best would work is just applying the regular lights mask. Let's build it. Let's have the curves. And I like the curves, but you can also use levels or whatever other layer you might want to use or you like. So let's go with the curves. And this would be the brightness of the image just the luminosity pixels so whatever is bright and dark the same way as going to just grayscale so here we control basically all of the parts of the image and we can darken some things or we can increase the contrast and the bright parts and here again we might want to play with either just luminosity which will be affecting the brightness of the pixels or the normal which will also affect the color so keep in mind that if you go to normal yes it looks maybe nicer and maybe brighter but you are also affecting the saturation of the pixels and this is not something that you might want to do always because you can end up with oversaturated colors of the image so I usually prefer working with just luminosity and if I want to restore saturation later, I can do this. And now with the luminosity masks and the arc panel, you can go as deep as you want with image processing. You can control all the parts of the image, all its brightness and all the darks and mid-range parts as you want. That is it for simple masking tutorial. Stay tuned for more advanced usage and subscribe if you really like this tutorial. Thank you.